So I wanna show how I'm going to do uh, my four link and then also my limiting straps. Uh, if you know anything about limiting straps, they should always be as center as possible to your axle and your chassis. With this, with four links, I'm just using the stock right now, but then I also have this aftermarket uh, aluminum one. Uh, the four link, the links attached to the outside. Now with this aftermarket, you can't, it's not gonna hold, the screws, when you go in, they're not gonna hold. So if you if you mount your four, your link essentially, put your screw through, it's just gonna kinda slide in and out. So I have to make, you either have to put a, a nut on the inside here, or you have to have some sort of, something for the screw to set into. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a servo, one of the old servo horns that came with the Emacs, and I'm going to cut it, I'm gonna drill a tiny hole through here so that the link screw mount, mount screw, will go into that hole on each side, and that's what'll hold the screws in so I don't have to use a nut, and then I'll also have an adjustable mounting point for my uh, limiting strap, essentially. I'll be able to uh, mount it wherever I want within that. Uh, we may end up having to cut it off just depending on if it hits on things, but because realistically we only need one hole. So we'll go ahead and put the hole here and then we'll use either, we'll probably use this hole here, uh, but we'll see how the adjustment goes. But yep, just wanted to show how I plan on doing my four link screw mounts as well as my, at least for the front, my limiting strap. should do. So this side of the uh, servo tray is threaded, this side is not. So this, this screw can just loose, come in loose and uh, it won't stay. So like I said, you have to put a nut on there, but we're gonna go ahead and mount this in here. We can put our little hole in there and we're gonna go ahead and be able to screw into there and then mount our uh, center limiting strap to that. It'll be pretty good, I think. So we've got it mounted up, it works. We'll be able to mount our limiting strap to that. However, something about this aftermarket tray, if you notice on the stock tray, the mounting points are equal. This tray isn't designed for four link, neither is the original mounting tray, but we're gonna make it work. So essentially you can see that this side is thicker and rounded. That's the side that the threading goes into. When you come in from this side, it's supposed to thread on this side when you're using a Y link we're gonna have to trim this down so that they're equal. Uh, otherwise, the whole thing is kind of just offset a little. Also, there's not a lot of movement in here, so it kind of is binding on that because it's got a curve and it, uh, it's not ideal. So we're gonna, we're gonna customize this a little. Uh, the other option is just to get a four link servo tray, but I like, I like to make things hard on myself, so we're gonna, we're gonna cut this up. So you can see we went ahead and dremeled it out made this thinner. We also, I also cleared a little bit in the back here so that the arms can uh, move a little more and articulate a little more on there, the links. Um, so this should be a lot more even and balanced and centered when we go ahead and mount them. Okay. I think that's going to be much better. So there we go. We're all installed. You can see that it's much more even. And we've even got our limiting strap mount. So we can mount our limiting strap anywhere on here. Like I said, we'll probably end up cutting this down. We probably only need this third hole here. Um, just because I don't want it to, uh, this is gonna basically bottom out. It might even, we might even end up needing to mount it to the hole that's below right there, that fourth hole um, from the backside and cutting all the rest off. Again, we'll have to see. Maybe we won't, I don't know, we'll mess with it. But much, much better, much better. The screw needs to go in a little more. I'm hoping the screws aren't hitting each other. I don't, I don't think they're that long, but worst case, we'll just get a shorter screw or trim the one. So we got it all mounted up. I did have to cut the servo horn quite a bit all the way down to the first hole, essentially. It was rubbing on the drive shaft when it would drop in, and uh, we don't want that. 
that. So I cut it as short as possible, which is fine. You, you actually want the mounting strap to be as low as possible. And I'll just adjust it up here. Uh, you want to make sure that, see the higher it is, it's got like a center, like a, a pivot point. And the, the, further it away, the further away it is from the pivot point, the less, the more it's going to restrict your articulation. So realistically, the most ideal spot for this would be down here. But clearly, we, we can't do that. You, you want it to be on the same pivot point as the entire axle. So you want it axle level, but we can't do that. Drive shaft, all that stuff's in the way. And the further you move it out from the center, if you come out to the centers or the shocks here, it's going to restrict your articulation as well. So you want to make sure it's as center as possible and as low as possible. But yeah, and I can adjust the height up here. So if we want to tuck it in a little bit and get the, get, a, get a lot lower, we'll be able to do that and we'll be able to maintain our, articu our you know, articulation fully, hopefully. Um, as long as we're not hitting too bad on the servo and stuff. We weren't before, so there's no reason we should now. All right. And then we'll just have to do the rear. So for our rear limiting straps, uh, we've got a spot here to mount. Uh, we got the, we're gonna use the same thing here. Again, this is just a D wired. It's the sheath from a wire and I cut it in half. There's a lot of different things you could use. Uh, rubber bands are, this is more stiff, but more flexible. It's got a little bit of stretch to it, but not much. So I like this material a lot. It, it's a rubber bands are just too stretchy in my opinion um, and then chains are it's hard to find scale chains but if you can find scale chains they're cool too uh, but again this is just a, a, a thicker wire and I pulled the wire out and then I, I cut it in half as you can exacto essentially and then uh, so we're gonna go ahead and mount this here uh, this was mounted in a loop previously uh, not ideal because again you want it to go center to center as much as possible so what I think we're gonna do is we're gonna drill a tiny hole straight through our truss at, uh, at an angle, we're not going to hit where these uh, two two links, you know, mount. But we're going to go through here, and we're going to try to. There, there should be enough meat in there, I think, to to get a good screw and uh, get a decent amount of depth in there before we hit on the axle. So we're going to give that a try. I think that looks pretty good. You can see we've got our little hole there, and then it comes through the back. Uh, it shouldn't come out too much, but it looks like, I mean, that should be plenty of meat for a good screw to hold into. Uh, so let's go ahead and get one of our screws and get it in there. Use just one of these little shorties. To get the screw in there that's good we are coming out the bottom here just a little oh actually we're not that was just plastic my bad let's uh let's keep screwing it in and we'll see if we can if we're coming out the bottom we're not all the way in we're close though i just didn't want to poke out too much oh yeah we're, we're just barely coming through the bottom now so that's all the way tight now mind you we're gonna have this limiting strap in there so there we go just barely got a little bit coming out so i'm pretty sure that will not hit it does not as long as we're not hitting our, our drive shaft, um, you're not going to be able to see in there. It is too hard to see, but it looks like we are safe on the drive shaft. And if we were hitting on it, oh, it's very close. Let's see. Yeah, it's very close. So just because I'm anal and I don't like things touching things they're not supposed to touch, I'm going to just clip the very end of that off basically just a little tiny bit just a little nip and then we still have a little bit extra but remember we're all the way in so we're going to be backing it out to fit this, the uh, limiting strap in so let's go ahead and back it out now And we're going to go ahead and mount the strap. Already got a pre existing hole there. All right. And 
never over tighten, especially on holes you make. Now we've got our shock strap, or shock strap, our limiting strap, and uh, should mount here pretty well. We just gotta figure out what length we want it at. Probably it's a belly dragger, so we're probably gonna do it pretty low, but if we mount it, say there, maybe a little lower. Put her right there, maybe. Maybe we'll go even lower. Maybe we'll put it super low. Yeah, let me get it uh let me get it mounted up. And I'm just using a safety pin. You can use the exacto. A safety pin is nice because it just keeps the hole round and symmetrical. The exacto can end up putting a slit, which will then tear. You even use drill bits. Actually, that's not a bad idea right now. Um, so I'll just take a Dremel drill bit. That'll help me core it out a little bit, you know, uh, versus just poking the hole. You can kind of spin it with your fingers, and it'll. Uh, actually ream it out essentially that way uh, it's, I know it's hard to see sorry guys but that way it gives us an actual hole versus just like a, a poked little tiny hole and then our screw will fit through that hole a lot better I guess we'll just do it with our finger first get it started so be careful when you're doing something like this. I've uh, actually screwed a screw into my finger because you're pushing real hard trying to get it to go through the rubber or the plastic or whatever, and you don't realize it, but see, it just did it. You actually screw into there a little bit. Then again, I got uh, calluses on my finger and stuff, so. But still, you can't really tell because you're pushing hard, so it kind of has got a little bit of pain in there, and then you're like, what, my finger's stuck. That's happened to me more than once. tighten and if this is too short we can always just poke another hole move it down a little bit and uh, we're adjustable I'm gonna probably cut it off about right here just so we have enough to give it some give us some space if we want to I guess it lengthen it up Actually, we'll do it a little bit extra we're gonna do like right, right here it's always better to to leave extras when you're drilling a hole don't drill it too big if you're cutting a wire don't cut it too short because you can always drill the hole bigger and you can always cut the wire shorter so there we go. We may have to shorten up our front, actually. But uh, yeah, that looks good. And again, you get to keep all the articulation. If you were to go from side to side, you lose all that all that flex. Right now, my limiting factor of flex is my uh, they're my links. Well, obviously my shocks, but it's not my limiting strap. The limiting strap is only the vertical part, right? The geometry says you want it in the center as much as possible and as close to the, the pivot point as possible. Again, it's hard to do on these because you have drive shafts in the way and all kinds of stuff like that, but I mean, that's pretty good. And there's the front again. And we can shorten those up if we want um, or lengthen them if we want because we left a little extra. Yeah, it's looking good. I think our front might be a little too tall. We might have to shorten it up just a little bit. We'll see once we get it all together. All right, we got the wheels and tires back on. We're all mounted up. Got our Liberty straps on. New axles on. Whoa, power cable out the hood. looking good. I do think I need to do some work on the front a little bit as far as the limiting strap is concerned. We also have to adjust our hole for our servo because we're basically stopping on it. Um, but yeah. Got our range of motion here. And our rear. Seems alright. I like it. 
kind of a belly dragger hot rod look going on. Still got some work to go, some tweaking to do, but like I said, this front servo's gotta, gotta do something with this. So I guess we're gonna have to go further up into the body. Um, yeah. So we got the limiting straps all adjusted on the deadbolt. Um, I think it came out pretty well. It's sitting really low. Uh, it definitely had troubles with the body and the servo. It's, it, the servo hits on the top of the, the body here in the hood. Uh, but we still, I mean, we don't have a lot of vertical articulation, uh, just as far as up and down, but we still have, I mean, we have a ton of left and right. All right, so I, it's plenty. And, you know, some people go for crazy articulation, but really it can be a drawback sometimes. So this seems like plenty. Um, we're probably gonna put a little bit bigger tires on at some point. Maybe we'll see how the, uh, the Trail King MTs fit. I just got those pretty big. Um, I don't know, they might be too big, but we'll see. It could be pretty cool looking. Uh, I, I just, I like that I can articulate in the back here uh, without any body trim and pretty close to the front. Now when the steering wheel, when I, when I turn, you get a little bit of rub in here, but nothing crazy. I'd rather not cut the body any further as far as the fenders are concerned, uh, but I don't know. I like it. We'll play with it for a while like this. Uh, and then, like I said, maybe we'll switch the tires and see what happens. But there we go. Limiting straps are important. So I hope you learned something from this video. Um, if you did, let me know in the comments what your favorite part was, what you found interesting. If you have some suggestions on how to achieve this look while maintaining performance, uh, let me know that as well. Put it in the comments. Give me a like, a subscribe, thumbs up, ring the bell. Um, and yeah, share it in all the groups. Uh, I hope to grow this community and provide valuable information as well as some entertaining videos here and there and uh, just show my journey along with the mini RCs. Um, yeah, it's been uh, fun and exciting so far. So I hope you guys are enjoying what you're seeing and you're learning a lot. And uh, like I said, if I missed anything, if you want to see anything specific, post it in the comments. Comments are always appreciated. All right, guys, get out there, have fun, uh, bash them up.